Thank you. So turning to, to this side, we, we, we hear lots of good things about impact investing and how it, how it gives us more tools. Uh, you're, you're in the micro loan business. You're in the micro business, although not using loans, but using, using grants. And we hear lots of things about millennials. Uh, this certainly came to the fore with the Zuckerberg Chan gift, where they it wasn't actually a gift. They invested it in a way in which they retain control. And so we hear lots of things about how millennials give in different ways, and they like control. So are you going to defend more traditional philanthropy? Where, where are you going to take us, Mitch? <laughs> I am. <laughs> uh, you've already heard quite a bit about Just Change, so I'll keep my uh, opening remarks brief, but I'll preface my comments in that I work in a sector that lawyers refer to as the mush sector, municipalities, universities, schools, and hospitals. And the common thread uh, of my experience through these various organizations is, is that I, I've typically worked in, in, in some capacity in institutional funding, either on the grant making side or on the grant writing side. And so that combination with Just Change is where much of my uh, comments originate from. I should probably also say that I am uh, definitely uh, an overly opinionated blogger with trust issues, uh, particularly, uh, <laughs> particularly in things that maybe sound just a little too good to be true. Uh, and that uh, uh, is obviously the topic of our panel, which is social investment. And so I will, I'll say this. I mean, like, yes, I think that uh, uh, get, making investments that produce a profit, uh, that don't rape the planet uh, and destroy people's lives are a great thing. Uh, I think that that is appealing to uh, a lot of people and that we should definitely move the uh, investment side of things uh, in, in that way. But I find it difficult to, to comment on, on the difference between an investor and a social investor when I think about companies like Twitter. Uh, Twitter has done remarkable things for democracy, for knowledge dissemination, for a whole slew of great outcomes that no charity could have probably accomplished any better. But no one would doubt that, the, that it has been just an incredible uh, benefit to society. If I invest in Twitter, am I a social investor? Can I done that cloak? Or, and if so, uh, what's the difference between a traditional tech investor that invested in Twitter because they saw excellent potential in the company? Uh, these are some of the issues that I battle with when, when talking about this. And uh, so in that context, the, the area that I find most fascinating isn't so much the investment area or social investment. It's how this is influencing the nonprofit sector. It's what's happening in the sector looking to this space on what does this mean for us. And uh, I'll, I'll save my comments for uh, later on in the conversation about how I think that's influencing it uh, and move on to read. Okay. You should, you should have sat here, I think. And I should. <laughs> we're, we're learning increasingly the problem isn't having, having access to the private capital. It's mm -hmm. having the demand side built. Do you want to comment on that, Mitch, before we open it to questions? Yeah, uh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you know your opinion. I, definitely, um, I, I think it's, I, I'll, I'll, I, will, let me, I, I like that you're, you're trying to talk about a nuance, because I think that's too often isn't addressed. You know, that, there's this idea that social investment is sometimes looked at as this panacea that can just solve all of our world's problems. Uh, but I, I like to think, you know, an example of an organization I used to work for, just to preface about where, where I'm coming from, you know, uh, and I think there are certainly private business solutions to existing things that charitable institutions are currently responsible for, that we should find a better way of divvying it up. But yes, absolutely, that there needs to be still grants and these things. But a great example I think of is an organization that, um, maybe I should ask, are there any job developers in the room? <laughs> Excellent, because I'm about to uh, rip them up. Uh, so this uh, this organization had job develop two job developers, and then the, and the program uh, cost them about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year to run, and they developed jobs for 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 youth, and they did an evaluation of the program, and they found out that you know like only maybe like six six seven jobs were created every year. They were typically not the highest um, meaningful uh, paid employment. And they realized that uh, had they just uh, hired the kids <laughs> to work on other programs in the nonprofit <laughs> and not pay the job developers, they could hire more kids, have more meaningful impact, and everything's better and cheaper. I think that's a great example of self-reflection that there are activities that the charitable sector can look at that maybe they shouldn't be doing. Operation Come Home, 
totally glad you mentioned them. They are, they're, that's exactly what they're doing. Rather than you doing job training, they're just giving kids plots of land and saying, well, why don't you farm and sell your, sell your veggies? And that teaches them a whole bunch of job development skills because they're running their own business. So, uh, yeah, that would be like, I think that that's great that you're nailing uh, that. But um, to, to the point that I sort of skipped over earlier that I, I, I think is um, uh, abundantly important for everyone who is an advocate for social investment and that uh, are, are driving this forward is uh, this influence that it's having on the nonprofit sector. And uh, as someone who has, I have, I've applied to a lot of grants on behalf of organizations and I see where it's going. You know, I, I, I swear just one day I woke up and every single charity suddenly became a social enterprise. Everyone was suddenly a social innovator uh, and doing social things. And you know, the social portmanteaus seemed to be just flooding the, everywhere you went. And I just started to wonder, what does any of this actually mean? Are we really just talking this, this brand exercise uh, rather than making meaningful change? Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it, it might not be a causal relationship, but by de facto, it is correlational that at the same time the wave of social investment was occurring was at the same time that we saw the largest systematic elimination of core funding in, in the nonprofit sector, the shift to project-based funding that was precarious by nature, um, the 2008 financial crisis and the effect that it had on GDP, and even now more so, there's this idea that grants have these, these line items like, like matching funds, where every dollar you receive, you need to find a dollar in the private sector. And that there's this, these mis this, you know, you, many people, even at this panel, have used this word sustainability that I think grantors largely misunderstand because it seems to be that you can give someone $600,000 now for three years and somehow magically their sustainability plan is to continue doing it after the money is gone. Uh, I, I find this uh, an absurd uh, landscape that uh, obviously faces major challenges by the sector and so I think they looked to social investment as maybe, maybe this is what we need to do. Maybe, maybe this is the, the solution. And uh, I'll end with an example that, that I feel always resonates with me is, is that I can promise you the, the Make-A-Wish Foundation will never be a social enterprise. Mm -hmm. But there is no one in this room that would doubt the value of granting the dying wish of a child who is leaving us all too soon. And so while we talk about social investment, I just like to remind people about there is this other glaring elephant in the room that uh, I think we need to, to remember in the context of that conversation. Thank you. What a great note to turn it over to, uh, to you for questions. Comment. A quick, yeah. a quick final comment. We need to wrap up soon. Sure. So I, I totally agree with what you're saying with one minor caveat. As long as these, this, these new financial instruments are, are expanding the pie, and not repurposing existing envelopes mm -hmm. that used to support the sector elsewise. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the, and there is this expectation uh, that, I, that has been present in the social investment dialogue. I remember there's the, the Monitor report that's now done by Monitor Deloitte that talked about the pioneer gap, that, that they said philanthropists should fill the risk gap so that social investors would make, would bother to make the investment. That irked me because mm -hmm. I think it's silly that, that philanthropists should have to make donations so that other investors will support a good cause. Yeah. A and so that's my only, only caveat. And, and mm -hmm. also just to contextualize my comments, I would focus more on my and more on public funders rather than individuals giving. Mm -hmm. I think that that's, that's to each his own how people think they should give is their, their choice. Great comment, though. <laughs>